Thank you very much, Dr. Rahman. Uh, actually, the pleasure is mine because for the past 14 years, I have been talking about this statement as the only thing we really need to have a vision of education. We don't need much more. And every, everywhere I spoke about it, actually I spoke about it in 29 countries during 10 years with many groups. And every time they liked it and they are fascinated by it, but no one did anything. On the, on the personal level, they did. For example, you know, like when, when you talk about your worth is not your grades, your not degree, not your social uh, status and all of that, but what you, Yuhsen, which I will describe its meaning, uh, it affected individuals and they did certain things and at the personal level and sometimes at the group level, but no one really took it further than that. This is the only place, Karachi, is the only place where a, collect, uh, a, a, a group of people decided to do something with it at a much larger scale. And I don't think there is anything that in my life really pleased me more than the email that I first got where I didn't know that people have been working for several years, three or four years, on this concept to really build a university with this statement as a main principle. And when I got that, I said, wow, I mean, you know, maybe there are many others who are working with, with, with this because uh, I, I work with it, but again, at a very personal level and with certain groups, but not really build a, an institution that will embody it and, and really take care of it at, at a much larger scale. So I really salute all the people who are involved, who have been involved, starting with my dear friend, Wasif Rizvi, because that's when I met, I met him in 2003. And um, uh, you know, to really gather this momentum and the uh, people who are involved, and what is beautiful about the people who are involved, they are the same age that are moving the world today, starting in Tunis and Cairo, where a million decided to stay in one square until uh, something happened. Uh, and then even New York was contaminated by Cairo, and they carried the sign which says the Maidan is here. That is Maidan at Tahrir, the Liberation Square is, is here in New York, and we are going to fight the main evil power, Wall Street. They didn't go to the White House, they didn't go to the Congress, they didn't go to uh, the uh, Pentagon, because they knew that these are employees in Wall Street. They have to do what Wall Street tells them. So they went directly to where the source of the problem in the world today. Uh, so uh, this, this group of people who have been working on making uh, or establishing a university with Imam Ali's statement as its uh, one of its principles uh, is a fascinating thing. And they have done it even before Cairo, before uh, uh, New York. But what is interesting about it is that it's the same age group that are really seeking for a world to be sane and to be healthy and to really shift the whole thing, not just change Hosni Mubarak, but change the logic that produced Hosni Mubarak. Uh, part of that logic is the knowledge that has been created and practiced the last 400, at least 400, 500 years. That knowledge, in my opinion and in my work, is my enemy. That is, uh, since 1971, I have been struggling against the dominance of this logic or of the knowledge that is given to us as progress, as advancement, as the savior of the world, etc. 
it is the hardest. I mean, you can see the impact of the military occupation. You can see the impact of economic occupation. You can see the of political, of cultural. But the hardest core, which is the core, is occupation at the knowledge level. Now, uh, before I talk about the statement, I want to talk a little bit to clarify the, what I mean by uh, occupation at the knowledge level. When I first uh, gave, submitted my first draft to the committee for the doctorate degree at uh, Harvard, I put as references, because you have to put like a list of references what you are depending on as for your knowledge and the formation of your ideas, etc. I put two lists. One list, the usual list, books and articles that uh, I read and uh, made sense. And the other list, list of sources of knowledge from life. And I put my mother, who was illiterate, as a source of knowledge, and the Palestinian hen as a source of knowledge for me. Of course, they went crazy. I mean, you know, what, what am I talking about? They thought that I'm really not serious or I'm just joking. I said, I'm very serious. These were sources for my knowledge. And they are very important sources. And I can't tell you why. Anyway, I mean, it was like a big, a big fight. And um, their usual way, I mean, one, one person asked me, what, what did you do? What, what did your mother write? That is, if, if she is a reference, where is her? you know, the reference. I said her, her, uh, what she did was not writing. She did in so many different ways. She embodied a different kind of knowledge that affected me a lot, and I'm working with my dissertation on that. So when he asked me how many books did she write, I said she didn't write any book. But in her life, she made about 15,000 dresses for women. And each dress has to fit the geometry of the woman, not the geometry in books. And every woman, of course, has a different geometry. How did she do it? I don't know. And she did not use this, you know, the geometric set that we give to students in school, the triangle and the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, compass and, 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 and the uh, ruler and, you know, these things. My mother never used these things. She didn't need them. In life, only some people, in very narrow ways, they need them. All what she needed is a, a measure, measure uh, which is made of uh, leather. You know? That's all what you need, because that is so flexible. Life is flexible. There is no woman who is made of straight lines and angles and uh, uh, parabolas and uh, circles and so on. Anyway, I, I was trying really to tell that man that there is another source of knowledge and that there is another kind of knowledge. Anyway, uh, they didn't accept that. And I stopped writing for a whole year. And then um, I agreed with them. I will drop the Palestinian hand, but keep my mother. And they accepted as a compromise. But then I wrote about the Palestinian hen again in an article. And I don't want now to talk about the Palestinian hen. It's another story. But I want to talk about my mother as a source of knowledge. Now, when I realized that, I realized something else, which was frightening to me. How I was enlisted in fighting and pushing out of our life, of our home, her kind of math, and bring in my kind of math. So I was like a soldier enlisted in occupying the place of her knowledge by my knowledge. Now, her knowledge is useful, is beautiful, is uh, something that comes from her. She was doing things from her. Uh, she, she did everything perfectly because there, there is no, 